This is January 11th, 2019. Mm -hmm. We're in Bedford, Massachusetts, and this tape is part of the Morse Institute Library's continuing Veterans Oral History Project. Yeah. My name is Jim Ramsey. Our camera person is Maureen Sullivan. And we're very privileged to have with us today Andre Joseph Pru. Mm -hmm. uh, welcome, Andre. Yes, thank you. You're very welcome, very welcome. Nice to have you here, and uh, we'll start the interview. Yeah, okay. May I ask when you were born? I was born March 16, 1924. And where were you born? In Fitchburg. Fitchburg, Mass. Yeah. And did you spend all of your growing up years in Fitchburg? Yeah, mostly. Mostly in Fitchburg? Yeah. So your family... Fitchburg and Lemonster, but mostly Fitchburg. Mostly Fitchburg. Uh, did you have uh, brothers and sisters? I, I, get a sis I had a sister and a brother. They're gone. I see. But you grew up with your siblings, a sister yeah. and brother. Yeah. Were, were you the oldest? Uh, yes, I was the oldest one. You're the oldest yeah. uh, sibling. So you and your parents and your two siblings grew up basically in Fitchburg. Fitchburg, right. And you went to school, uh, public school in yeah. Fitchburg? Yeah. Well, what was the name of your elementary? Do you happen to remember what the name of your school was? Chamber of the School, St. Joseph. St. Joseph. Yeah. Like your middle name. My middle name. Right, St. Joseph, Joseph School. Great, great, yeah. great. Now, you, you currently live uh, in the VA hospital here in Bedford, right? Yeah. Uh, wh where, where did you live just before you came here? Just before here. Was that I in lived Le in Le Lemonster for a while. In Lemonster? Yeah. Okay. And that's and, where I joined this, and here I am. Right. And about how long ago was that? If uh, A couple of years ago. A couple of years ago. Yeah. I see. I see. Uh, are, are you married, or, or, or have you been married? I, I was married for 64 years. 64 years? Yeah, and she died. She oh. had cancer. I'm sorry to hear that. So, but that's life, I guess. It's life. So, so how old were you when you were married? When you got married? When I get married? About. About twenty-one. Twenty-one or so. Yeah. Had you finished the service? Did you complete your military service before you got married? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So did you get married kind of right after the yeah, service? right after. I think you had a story about your wi wife uh, and how you met her. Uh, yeah. Would, would you like to share that with us? Yeah. Well, when I get out of the service, I come back to, to Lemonster. I didn't like Fitchburg. I never liked it. So I said, I told my wife, I says, we're going to make a change here. I says, I, I don't like Lemon, uh, Fitchburg. I says, we'll, we'll move to Lemonster. I see. The smaller town, nice. And we did. And we were happy with that. And uh, she was from New Brunswick, Canada. Oh, she was? Yeah. And uh, she come down on, on a vacation by instantly my wife and my, my wife and my mother were sort of related. Were related? Yeah. Huh. So they were married. Uh, uh, I come home and I told my mother and she introduced me to her 
And she said, she's, the, she's my cousin. She's your mother's cousin? Yeah. So I said, yeah, okay. I said, by the way, I get news for you. She says, what? I said, I'm going to marry her. <laughs> she says, what? You just come home from the service. You never went out with the girl. And she didn't go out with you. So she said, it's not going to work. I said, Ma, I said, this guy's going to make it work. Because I says, that's it. I want that life with her. I said, I spent my time in the service. Now I'm going to spend my time with her. Oh, she said, well, and by the way, my wife, had to leave a week after I get to know her. And I says, uh, we went to the train station with her. She, first, before that, it, that week, we went to Boston. I says, we're going to go to Boston. And I says, I'm going to try to get you to get an extension on your leave. So we did. They didn't budge. You mean her leave before she had to go back to Canada? Yeah. And uh, I spoke to the guy and I said, uh, just getting out their service. I said, As you know, I still in uniform. It's only a week. So I says, now I'm going to marry her. Well, he said, well, you get married, and then we'll do, we'll make, do business. I said, you can do business now if you want to. I'm ready to do it. So, no, no, he said, no. So she'll have to go back to New Brunswick, he says. So I call my wife on the side. I says, is that all right with you? Well, she said, yes, I get no choice, have I? Well, I says, we'll make a choice. I said, this guy ain't going to ruin my ideas and your ideas. So I says, you go back, see a priest, and make arrangements to get married. And I'll do that in Fitchburg. <laughs> so she <coughs> said, okay, we'll contact each other by phone. So we did. And I kept going. So finally she, uh, called me. She says, it's, everything is set here that the priest made it, the arrangement. <coughs> and we'll get married here in Canada, she says, and we'll go it alone. So I said, that's all right. We don't need them. <laughs> so I said, but they need us. So I said, let's go. So I said, when do you get married? She says, hey, uh, March 20th. She said, you be here and we'll get married. Okay. So I did. So my mother says, I hate to tell you, but it's not going to work. She, she don't know you and you don't know her. I said, Ma, I said, I don't care what the world wants. I know what Andre wants, and I'm going to do it. <laughs> so let's go. So I said, are you coming to my wedding? <laughs> well, she says, I'm your mother. I'll have to go. Well, I said, that's what I want to know. 
you you ready to go? Yeah, she says, I'll go. So we packed up. And that week there we went for Canada. Oh God. It was cold and it would snow. <laughs> so I says, what a way to end uh, my life, you know. <laughs> but I says your bachelor life, right. Yeah. I said, that, that's gone now. I said, now I'm going to go for a new life. And you. So I said, you ready to go? She says, yes. So we go up. So when I get there, she says, you're going to have to go visit the priest tonight. I said, what for? Uh, she says, he wants to talk to you. Father Allen was his name. So we went and see him. And a lot of them up there didn't like him because he was, he was strict as a priest, you know. He did his job. So we get to hit it off pretty good, him and I. So Andre, he says, we'll marry you tomorrow. He says, you ready to go? I says, we're ready to go. I am. Ask her. Yes. She says, yes, I'm ready to get married. Because she was 25 years old then. I was 21. So. Her, her side didn't believe in it. They said, you two don't know each other. It's not going to work. It's not going to work. They're going to be sorry. I said, let me worry about it and let her worry about it. Well, they said, we, we got no choice, have we? I said, no, you don't. <laughs> but we have. I want her and she wants me. So I serve my country. Now I'm ready to settle down. So we did. We got married in the morning. My father-in-law and mother-in-law and them, they come up to me. They says, this is ridiculous. She said, you never knew each other. You never went out together once. And you're getting married. But uh, we've got to agree with you. We said, OK, thank you. And I said, uh, I'll be a good wife to her. I'll be a good husband to her, rather. And I said, uh, We'll make it all right. We'll make you be happy for us. So they says, okay. So we get married. And we come to Fitchburg. It was a snowy winter and cold up there and over here. <laughs> so we get married, come back, come back to Fitchburg. And uh, all the people that knew me in South Fitchburg, they come over and greet me, you know. They, of course, they couldn't all go to Canada. Right. So you celebrated there. So we celebrated there. And I said, now we'll go to Fitchburg and celebrate there. Good, good. <laughs> well, let me just interrupt a little bit. So. Yeah. Basically, you were married at 21. Yeah. And you proved you proved everybody wrong because yeah. you were married to the same woman for 64 years, for right? 64 years. Happily married, and yeah. that's a wonderful story. Yeah. Well, congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. And let 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 me go back a little bit now. Yeah. Kind of to talk a little bit now. Did you and your wife uh, have children? No. Okay. Okay. She had three miscarriages in a row. Oh my! Okay. The doctor says, "No, no, okay. no." He says, uh, "You're going to have to 
protect yourself on right. that. Well, it sounds like you and your wife took good care of each other for yeah. a long time. Yeah. Good, good, good we, for you. So we get along good. Good. And uh, when it was our 67th year marriage, we celebrated. We went up to Canada and celebrated. And they would, they would look all so happy. I said, now see, <laughs> with nobody got to hurt. Right, right. She's happy, right. I, I believe, and I am. So what more do we want? Right. So both of you were right. Yeah. And you proved them wrong. We were right, and they well, were wrong. And I, and and I told them, I said, now who was right? Right. They and said, you were right. You. Well, okay. I oh, says, okay. Let's drop it right. there. Well, you, uh, and I, uh, as we talk about your military service, I'd, I'd like to ask you, uh, where, where did you enter the military? Uh, what, would, would you tell me something about how you joined the service and, and why? Well, I wanted to join the service. I wanted to go in the Navy. And uh, it says that my mother says she was wishing it, that I wouldn't pass. I says, uh, well, I'm going to pass. Pass the, what, the physical the, or the, 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 the yeah. test or? Yeah. So she says, I don't think you're going to make it. Well, she says, I think I will. I was only 16 when I wanted to join. When you want, okay. So they said, ah, uh, not going to. Things are not going to work the way you're going. I said, Ma, let me worry about it. So I said, uh, Dad was in World War I. I said, he got wounded twice. Mm. He was a mess. And I said, uh, now it's my turn to serve. Well, she says, ain't that enough when you know your, your father was wounded in France and uh, seriously wounded. Well, I says, yes, but he did his duty for his country. He had nothing to worry to regret. And I says, I think I can do the same. I said, when Dad died, he got killed on route too. Oh, your father did? Yeah. Wow. The, the second day, they started to build Route 2, tear it apart. And a big, big oak tree come down, come right on him. Wow. Fractured skull, two broken shoulders, and no, uh, broken legs, everything, you know? And I said, Dad told me, he says, son, he says, I serve my country. And I says, I want you to serve your country. He said, we got a war coming on. And he was right. So he says, uh, join what you want. I was in the Army with Harry S. Truman. <clears throat> so, with with Harry S. Truman in the Army? A Navy. So I joined, uh, I went, they said, you can't go in. Who said that? The, the draft board. They wouldn't release me. To join the Navy? Yeah. Says... He says, uh, they says that you got too many dependents. I didn't think, you know. I was, uh, I was young and I didn't think of that. 
This was this would be your your mother and your my siblings. My mother, my grandmother, my sister, and my brother. Four dependents. He said, "You got to stay back and support them. What you do now?" Oh, oh boy, I didn't think of that. <laughs> hmm. So they said. Then the draft board said, we're going to vote on this. So they voted. There's a big table like that. Now. And they were on there. They said, we're going to vote on that. So they voted on it. I won. <laughs> so <coughs> There's a pattern developing here. Yeah. So they said, uh, we can't stop you. we got to let you go because yeah, what your record your dad had and what you got, we've got to let you go. You've got to have your wish. I said, good, thank you. That's all I wanted to know. Now I said, can I go? Yes, they said, you got to go. But you're going to have to go to your draft board and tell them that you've been verified to to join whatever you wanted. So I says, okay, so I did. Next morning I went down to Navy headquarters and I says, I want I want to join the Navy. He looked at me and said, wasn't you here before? <laughs> I says, yeah. He said, uh, the draft board won't release you. I said, no, but they did now. And I said, if you don't believe me, you call the Navy headquarters. So they did. Oh. They said, when will he go? Well, he can go tomorrow to the Navy, and they, they'll uh, go along with it. And you'll have him join the Navy like he wants. So I says, okay, thank you. That's all I want from you. Now I says, I'm going to do my part. I'm going to join right now. They says, okay, sign here. I sign. They said, now, next week, on a Monday, you'll be down here. They get on a bus and go to, to Boston to verify all that. I says, okay. So I said, what? What am I going to go to Boston for? Well, he says, you get to go there, and they'll tell you where you're going to go. So I did. So. They said, tomorrow you will get on the bus, head for Sampson, New York. Sampson, New York. Yeah. And that's where you'll be in the Navy. You join the Navy boot camp. Oh, that's where you had boot camp? Yeah. So, so I said, OK, I'll be there. And I was. So every time I do say something, I made damn sure I followed it up. <laughs> we can count on you. Yeah. So, uh, so you went to boot camp. Boot camp, New York. And you were still. Let's see. So, do you remember what what year that was? Jeez, no. Some some in the forties. Uh, yeah. I, I guess the war, World War II had started. Yeah, oh yeah. So it was going, and sometime in the early 1940s, yeah. you went to boot camp in yeah. Sampson, New York. Yeah. Okay. How long were you there? Uh, About. Seven weeks. Seven weeks. How did you like boot camp? I didn't mind it. I was young, I was full of pep. <laughs> so. So when I left, uh, 
my mother and them and at home, they says, you won't make it, you won't make it, you won't make it draft. So I says, let me worry about it. I says, well, I'll make it. So I packed up my suitcase and I went up to New York. And when I get there, they said, you won't need that suitcase anymore. They said, you're in the Navy now. Okay, let's go. So they put me on another bus and brought me to the camp. And uh, they said, now you're getting in the Navy, you're going to boot. You're in a boot camp. So I said, that's all right. And that's what I signed for. So they said, but uh, they said, how old are you anyway? Oh boy. I said, 16. No, you got to be 16 and a half before you can go. I said, look, either I go now or I pack my suitcase and I go to Canada and I'm going to join the Canadian Navy. <laughs> oh, they said, don't be foolish like that, young man. They said, <laughs> you got to you gotta go with the, the wind. Okay, I says, I'll go on my terms. I want the Navy. Hello, they says, wait a minute. They went in the room, they talk a while. They come back, they says, you're, you're in, you're as good as in. You really want to get in that bad? They said, by the way, what the hell makes you so anxious to get in there? <laughs> and it's the 16 and a half million are out there fighting and all their power to, to dra dodge the draft. And well, I says, I don't care what they do, the 16 and a half million. I care what I do. And I want what I want. I don't want to stay around and go into the Army. I want Navy. Oh, they said, you, you're determined to go. I says, yep, I'm all set to go. They says, okay, you go. So. Why, why did you want the Navy so much and not the Army? I don't know. You just did. Just that's a, that's enough. <laughs> that was enough. Right, right. My Good. My dad was in the army and he got wounded to hell. And I says I don't want that. I want the navy. I did, want a ship. I like ships anyway. Did did you have other family members who were in the service? Uh, you know, cousins or. Oh yeah, my cousins, my uncles all were in the army. And me, I didn't want it. I wanted Navy, <coughs> excuse me. And uh, good, good. Yeah. So you, you went through boot camp. Boot camp. And I guess, I, I guess I, you did okay. I did all right. So. I go and I see these I'm big guys. No, I'm I'm a small guy, hmm. but I, I see these big guys and I look up at them. <laughs> and some of them big guys look at me. And they said, "Where are you going, Sonny?" I said, "I'm going with you guys." He says, "You can't. You won't. You won't pass that." You're talking about the physical stuff in yeah. boot camp. He says, you won't make it. I says, you want to bet on it? <laughs> so I'd see these big guys running, you know, on, this, on the uh, traps. 
So, that's first thing you know, I'd see these big guys. Boom, on the floor. Another one, boom, on the floor. Me, a little guy, I was laughing at him. And I said, this guy not going on the floor, he's going there. So, I says, okay, now it's my turn to go on the obstacle course. So, I get on. Uh, going good, going good. The big guy said, what the hell is holding you up? <laughs> <laughs> I said, yes. I said, that's why I said, I'm doing to, to show you guys that I can do it as well as you can. They said, oh. So I get pretty friendly with them all, you know. They said, well, Let's go all the way. I said, that's right. So I did and was happy with it. And you did it. You, you made it through the obstacle course. Yeah. Good for you. Yeah. I was happy. And my, uh, I lost an uncle in the Army. Do World War II. And I lost my cousin in the Navy, World War II. But he he didn't get hurt, killed in the in the army or anything. He was home. He was he's uh, come to visit my grandmother that was dying of cancer. So he did it. And uh, he got there, Pittsburgh, and don't he come down with a cancer too? Oh, your cousin? Yeah. Wow, that's too bad. Yeah. That's too bad. Yeah. Too bad. So I, after you, so you finished boot camp. Yeah. And when you boot camp, when you finished boot camp. Did you go to any other training, or did you go to a ship, or what, what yeah, was next? Yeah, I went to a ship, yeah. And what, I've, I've, what, what, what were you at the time? Were, were you a seaman? Seaman, yeah. Seaman. So I uh, with a log on it. I, then they said to come on on the bulletin board that I'd be assigned to a ship. It was the, uh, they put me on the, uh, not a destroyer. Uh, a cruiser, maybe? Cruiser. 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 What, well, do you remember the name? I think you told me once. Do you remember the name of that cruiser? Yeah, GL-97. Something like, that's right. That's right, CL-97. Do you remember the name? Was it the, the USS Flint? The USS Flint. That sounds from good. Okay. Yeah. So, so you went right to the USS Flint. Yeah. And then they finally transferred me because I didn't like it. I kept telling the officer, you know, I said, I don't like this. I said, I want, well, they said, what the hell do you want? I said, I want the destroyer. Huh. Well, they says, we'll see what we can do. So why did, why, did you, why did you think you wanted a destroyer rather than a cruiser? Smaller ship or? Smaller ship and a, a more action. Like. More action? Yeah. So I was looking for that, you know? You were looking for action? Yeah. Hmm. So get up in the morning. Yeah, on the bulletin board, Andre Pru transferred to a destroyer. So I went and see the officer in the, uh, in the office. I said, is that right? Get the uh, destroyer? Yeah, they said, yeah. It's a new ship that's just being commissioned. Oh. 
it, it, it was just being commissioned? Just being con commissioned. Right. So I said, okay, when do I leave? They said, you, you leave today, you go to New York, Samson, New York. And uh, they'll put you on the ship and you'll be on the destroyer. So where, where actually was the destroyer? Was it on the west coast or the east? West coast. Ah, west, where, so where, where, where was this? Was it? New you, York. No, on the west coast. So, I mean, like California? Oh, California. Was Seattle, yeah. maybe, or? Yeah. Uh, Seattle, Washington? Yeah. Seattle, Washington. So right. is that where you, I think that's where it was commissioned. Yeah, yeah. Were, were, were you there for the commissioning or after yeah. the commissioning? They're commissioning. Okay. So you were there right from the beginning? Right from the beginning. And what, what was the name of this ship, of the destroyer? Oh, Douglas H. Fox. Wow, okay. Yeah. So it was a you DD. You it on your papers. Right, it was a, it was a destroyer number yeah. 779, right? Yeah. Okay. Great. So, so this was in, uh, so this was like around 1944 time frame, something like that, right was it? Right there, yeah. And so uh, we took off. So where'd you take off for? Took off for Canada. For Canada. So we, uh, so we maneuvered with the Canadian Navy, you know. So they and put me on there, and I said, "Boy, good." Um, now you're happy. I was happy with it. So, what 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 were you assigned to do? What what was your job? My job was to uh, did it have something to do with one of the guns. Yeah, I was on a gun mount. A gun mount, like a what? What a, a destroyer has like a five-inch gun, right? Yeah, five-inch thirty-eight. We're looking here at a picture of the destroyer. Yeah, yeah. So were you on? Were you on one of those guns? Yeah. See the bow of the ship is there, and that's where I was. The forward gun. Yeah. Five-inch gun. Yeah, five inch thirty eight. Five inch thirty eight. Good. Yeah. So what did you? So what did you do on the, with the gun? We were maneuvering with the Canadian Navy. Okay. Back and forth, back and forth. Okay. For about a week. Then it says we're going to the east. To the Pacific. Pacific. Okay. So and I didn't care for that too much. Atlantic. So anyway, we went up, and I didn't like that. I told the guy, the officer, I said, I, I'm not happy with it. Not yeah. happy to go to the Pacific? Yeah. No, the Atlantic. Oh, okay. I said, no, I'm not happy with it. Yeah, I don't want to go there. To the Atlantic? Yeah. Okay. So they said, uh, we'll transfer you again. So they put me on a destroyer. And uh, they put me on, that's the ship they put me on. Okay, so this was the Douglas H. Fox. Yeah. Okay. Douglas H. Fox. And, and, and where did you go then? Did you go then to the we, Pacific? We went to the Atlantic, uh, Pacific. Pacific, yeah. okay. Yeah. And where, where in the Pacific did you, did you go somewhere for, for some initial training with the yeah. ship? Yeah, we went to uh, Seattle, Washington. Okay. And we maneuvered there a while. Okay. And then is getting closer to the war. Closer to uh, Japan and, yeah. right. So we 
we get on there, we stopped in Hawaii. Oh, in Hawaii, okay. Yeah. And what did you do there? So we maneuvered again, and a More, lot of maneuvering. Was it training kind of it, maneuvering? Yeah. So we, we kept on going. So the captain announced on the PA system, he says, well, he says, we're going to the Pacific. We're going, we're going for the Japanese. Well, so what? That's what you wanted, right? Yeah. <laughs> I wanted the one that to go there. Action. Yeah. So we got up and we get up to the Hawaiian Islands. It was getting hot there. There was a Japanese ships were all around there. But the captain said, don't let it bother you. He says, we'll, <coughs> we'll fix them. So we kept going, kept going. And he says, now he says, well, I don't, can't tell you where we're going, but we're going in the deep Atlantic, Pacific. Pacific. So we went up. We, as we were getting in Hawaii, in the Philippine Islands, and the, then the fireworks started. So we took it as a kind of bunch of young guys anyway. So. I, I was happy with it. And where where did you uh, where where did you wind up for the fight? Were you in one of the battles? Oh yeah. Which I mean Hawaii, uh, Okinawa maybe Philippines Philippines. A, a little of Okinawa. So you went you 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 were your ship went to Okinawa. Yeah. And what was the, was was this when Okinawa was being invaded? Yeah. Was this for, for the invasion of Okinawa? Yeah. So what was your ship's job then? Was it some kind of a radar thing or? Yeah. We had radar and we were, The radar's up in the air. Right. So the radar was kind of on the lookout. Yeah. What for Japanese planes? Yeah. So that's so, that's what your ship's job yeah. was. So we were knocking them down pretty good. We knocked down seventeen that night. We so got hit. Seventeen Japanese. Yeah. Planes. Yeah. Kamikazes. Now was. Was 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 your gun involved in that? I mean, you you, you were assigned to one of the gun mounts, yeah. right? The, the gun mount two. Gun mount two. Yeah. So were you shooting at these uh, Japanese planes? Yeah. yeah. Wow. And you, what were you doing? Were were you inside the mount? Yeah. What what were you doing? Handling ammunition or? Yeah. And ammunition. Right. And put it in there, boom, boom. <laughs> right. And you, you and you kept handling. Kept handling. Yeah. And w were were any of these Japanese planes con kamikazes? Yeah. So what 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 were they doing? What were the kamikazes doing? Kamikazes were shooting at us. What? Oh, they were shooting at you, and did some of them actually uh, try to crash into the ships? Yeah. Oh, they were getting them quite a bit. They they gave it all they had, but the, when they opened up, we opened up. We won out. You won out. Till we got the if Kamikaze came down. And just as he gets over the ship, 
releases of that bomb, 500 pound bomb. Wow. Boom. Boy, everything flew. Did he crash into the ship? Yeah. The kamikaze? Yeah. <clears throat> so. So what happened then? So then I, I was dazed, I guess. So I come out, get up, I, I looked around, legs, arms, head, all gone. So I started picking up, cleaning up. Captain up on the bridge says, hey, sailor, what are you, the hell are you doing? I said, sir, I'm picking up body parts and everything. I says, he says, it can't be. That, that, that uh, part of the ship is demolished. He says, you're telling lies. I says, no, sir. I says, I'm telling you the truth. I'm, a, I'm in Gun Mountain 1. He said, oh, come on, come on now. He said, get up here on the bridge. He said, I want to talk to you. So I started up. So by the time I get up to the bridge to talk to him, I said, the plane started coming back. Now look at the bing, bing, coming off the bulkheads, you know. And uh, then I heard a voice. There was a captain. He said, get up here, Sally. He said, I need your help. He says, I, he says, I can't, I can't move. I, I got wounded, I guess. Oh, he, the captain was wounded. Yeah. So I said, okay, I'll be up there, sir. So I started up the ladder going up. And he says, uh, hurry up, put a tourniquet on my leg, he says. Get me. So I, I did. So. So I helped him up. He was a little guy like me, but he was pretty well set. He was talking there. He had his mind. But he said, I, I, I didn't uh, like to have you help me. He said, I can't, I can't maneuver on my own. So he said, you're a little guy, ain't you? I said, yes. He says, yeah, but I like my arm. He says, we're both a little guy. Yeah, and I said, we, we'll make it, we'll survive. The plane comes down again. Ba -doom, ba -doom, boom, 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 boom. Jesus Christ, I could see him on the deck there, the blood. Oh. So we kept on. I get up on the bridge, I picked, it, helped him up, brought him down the sick bay, they call the sick bay, is the char hall. And, uh, and we, as we did, I said this. Okay. And, uh, So I told the doctor, I said, Doc, I said, the captain's hurt bad. I said, he's wounded. He said, get him on the table here. Put him on the table, and 
Istenről, hanem. So, Captain R.M. Pitts. R.M. Pitts. Tex yeah, come wow. from Arlington, Texas. Hmm. And uh, he was a heck of a nice guy. So, I told them, I said, uh, you got to do something fast. I said, yeah. you got to turn the crater on him, but I said, you only can stop so much. And bring him up, put him on the table, and they started on him right away. I hated to see that. So how did the captain, uh, how, how did he do? Did he make it? No. He didn't? No. no. Wow. They, they, they uh, transferred him from the ship to Honolulu, a bigger hospital. Yes. Yep. So they did that, but he didn't make it. That's too bad. Well, you sure, yeah. you sure tried, you did your best. I did my best. To help help him. Yeah. You know, when you're in there, you do your best. You're like brothers on the ship, you know. You only get so many. And uh, the, the ground our ship when the captain and them get hurt, there was uh, 25 of us on our, sh on our gun mount. 25 on, on your gun mount? Yeah. 20 of them got wiped out. Wow. So there wasn't many of us left on that. So what did the bomb, like, Drop on your gun mount or something? Yeah, right on our gun mount. And somehow you survived? Yeah. And a and miracle. You're a tough guy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Wow. So was the ship disabled or? Uh, well, it was disabled to a certain extent. They brought our ship into, uh, uh, what the hell they call that now? Like an island or something or some? No, not an island, a, a ship, another ship. Oh, another, brought yeah. you to another ship? Yeah. Ah, you for mean repairs. For, for repairs? Yeah. yeah. Mm. Mm. It brought our ship into uh, what the hell they call that? Was it called a r repair ship? Yeah. But but it has another name. Yeah. I yeah. There's another name there. So a tender? No. Okay. So how long were you there with that other ship? That other ship. Did did they made repairs to yeah. the Fox? Yeah. And they they saved it, but. They, uh, and so after they finished with it, did did you go on someplace else? Or? Oh yeah. Didn't go back home. <laughs> Went back. back. After them. Back to Okinawa? Yeah. I see, I see. So were there any more uh, kamikaze attacks on, on your ship, or was there further damage? There was some, but uh, we had some help from other ships right. that come alongside. And cover for you. I, okay, okay. So that's what saved us. So eventually, I guess, uh, you defeated the Japanese yeah. on Okinawa, right? Yeah. 
Wow, that, that must really have been something. It was, it was something. So what did the, at the, at that point, what, pardon me, where, where, where did the fox go? Well, we were all around the Pacific, getting over there and let them take over so you could keep, keep on going, you mm -hmm, know? Mm -hmm. And uh, this was, this, the Battle of Okinawa was really close to the end of the war, right? Yeah, yeah. That, that, that wasn't long before we dropped the atomic bombs. Yeah. Harry Truman. <laughs> right? He right. was quite a president. He got more credit than what he should have. He didn't like Roosevelt. Uh, right. He said that son of a bitch, he said he never did his job. He said that about Roosevelt? Yeah. So he said, now I'm in, I'm in control. So he says, uh, don't tell me about my copper. He says, I don't like him either. I'm going to get rid of him too. So, so I get kind of friendly with Harry S. Truman, you know, because he was in World War I with my dad. With your dad. And he says, uh, I told him my father was in. He says, yeah, Joseph Prue. He says, yes, I remember him well. He said, wow. we were together all the time. We were in the infantry. So he huh. says, so he says, uh, we can get along pretty well. So. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it sounds like it. So we, uh, yeah. Two tough guys. <laughs> yeah. He says, uh, so he says, uh, we're going to New York now, he says. And he says, I'm, I'm aboard your ship. He says, I'm going with you. And in New York, he said, there was Broadway. He says, we'll march down the street. So Harry Truman was on your ship? Yeah. And you went to New York? Yeah. And so what was this, a big p parade? Yeah. Uh, well, a Navy I, Day. Navy Day? Yeah. Wow. So, well, we'll go to New York. He got out. He could <laughs> walk, boy. He was a walker. So were you walking with him? So. Harry Truman was in the front of us in a limousine. And I look at him, I said, I know that guy. The other guy says, how the hell do you know? <laughs> I said, I know him. I, I couldn't remember his name in that. And I was stop and think. Yes, I said, I know him. They says, who is it? I said, Harry S. Truman. I said, that. So Truman came aboard our ship again. He says, you know, he says, we're well, going good. He says, we're going good. He says, now, he says, the Secret Service, he said, told me. I says, what? that paper on the desk, Roosevelt's desk. Well, he said, that's the, for the atomic bomb, sir. Oh, he said, what the hell is it doing there? Should be out here. <laughs> so, so, he says, uh, he says, we'll fix that. So we get on the Hawaiian uh, uh, Philippine Island. He says, he calls the servicemen in. 
he said, that barn there, he said, there, it's no good there. He said, take that bomb, put it on our plane, and take it to Tokyo and deliver it, and put on there, yours truly, Arias Truman. He put it. So <laughs> he did. So, so after he did it, a few days after, the phone rings. By then we were in New York. Yeah. <laughs> he says, he says, uh, the phone rings. They want Harry Truman on the phone. The president of Tokyo, Japan. So they says, hello, hello. He says, you know, Mr. President, he says, you owe us an apology for what you did there. You what? Why, you son of a bitch. That's the way he talked. He said, do you remember Pearl Harbor? No, he said, you don't. But we do. And he said, we're going to wipe you off the map. He said, you're going to get some more bombs there. So, boom, shut the phone down. Let that son of a bitch call again. He said, I'll wring his neck. <laughs> hmm. He was a regular guy, Truman. Yeah. Right. If it wasn't him, I think we'd still be there. So, That's that's quite a story. Quite a story. So so basically, kind of, did you basically leave the the navy at that point? A kinda, little after that. A little after that. Yeah. Were you discharged? We uh, we were you discharged in New York? No, we had to come back to Boston. Oh, get to Boston. Discharge. Okay. Yeah. So you were discharged in Boston, yeah. and what did you, uh, and did you go back to, so you went back to Fitchburg then? Yeah. Everybody must have been very happy to see you. Yeah, <laughs> very happy. Your mom, your sister, your brother. Yeah. And you said, I did it, Mom. Yeah. And she could see that you did it. She must have been very proud of you. Yeah, she was. Yeah, and my grandmother. Oh, Your grandmother, oh, right. She, she was happy. Poor well, she, old woman, you know. She was all paralyzed for 39 years. Wow. She took a shock when she was young. Huh. And. We had to take care of her. So was she living with you, with your family? Yeah. In Fitchburg? Yeah. <coughs> yeah. So she was proud of you. You must have been very happy to see them all. Yeah. And they were happy to see you. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Quite a feeling. Congratulations and thank you for your thank service. You. you. You did a, a, yeah. a great deal. Did, did, did you... Uh, Did you maintain any kind of contact with your, with some of your fellow sailors uh, in no, the Navy? No, not too much. They went their way and right. I went Everybody. my way, you know. And right, right. So basically you got out of the Navy. Yeah. Did you stay in the reserves or anything or did you just no, get out altogether? just get out. Got out. Well. Yeah. You you had done and seen a lot. Yeah. So then you basically went went to work uh, in Fitchburg. Yeah, in the paper mills. Paper mills. Yeah. I see. You stayed there for thirty years. Oh, you worked there for thir for thirty years. Yeah. 
Did you retire at that point yeah. after 30? Yeah. I see. I see. Yeah. So, uh, did I believe you received some medals? Yeah. As a result of your service, is yeah. that correct? It's in the papers, isn't it? Right. I I'm gonna kind of make a statement here. Uh, Mr. Prue found an article from May 2013, which talked about a ceremony where Mr. Peru and others received medals yeah. that they were entitled to from their service yeah. that he didn't get uh, following his service. Yeah. And what I'd like to do, if I can, is to read off what those medals were. Yeah. Is it okay if I read this? Okay. Uh, the World War II Victory Medal, mm -hmm. the American Campaign Medal, yeah. uh, the Asiatic Pacific Campaign Medal with yeah. Bronze Star Appurtenance. The Combat Action Ribbon. Yeah. Uh, a Discharge Button. And the Honorable Service Lapel Pin, which is commonly called the Ruptured Duck. Yeah. Which is kind of a strange name, but I guess... <laughs> it is, yeah. But I guess you must know what that means. Yeah. <laughs> so this is quite a list of medals that you got. Yeah. You, you must have been very happy yeah. to finally receive them. Yeah, after so many years. Well, we have a nice photograph of you getting those medals from yeah. uh, Representative McGovern. And McGovern, I, yeah. I think that photo will be included in uh, this interview. Yeah. So... Well, congratulations again. Yeah, uh, thank you. Um, so, so now here we are. Uh, what are we here? Forty, seventy years, seventy-five years later. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, so, what do you think about your decision to go into the Navy? Was it a good decision? I think it was. I think it was. It Made was something. You, you it feel was something. Proud, you know. You're proud. You should be proud. Yeah. Yeah. Well, good for you. Um, I mean, you had memorable experiences. I know of yeah. the, this terrible incident with yeah. the kamikaze. Yeah. But. Is there something that you would like to share with us that you remember uh, from your service, some event or some person uh, that you'd especially like to share with us? No. I can't. I mean, you've, shared, you, you've already shared a lot, so there doesn't need to be any more. I just wondered if you had anything else yeah. That you wanted to say. No, I think it's all right. You feel pretty good about yeah. w what you've said already. Yeah. Well, you should. Yeah. Um, now, I, th I think you said that you really don't have any family left. Is that? No. Is that what you told me? Yeah. But you have some close friends. Yeah who come to see you and whatnot. Visit me and everything, yeah. Uh, their names are mentioned yeah. in these articles here. And um, um, is there anything that you'd like to say to them uh, at the end of this? They'll probably see your interview and yeah. they, they, they may learn something about you that they don't know. Yeah. But I can say one thing. What's that? Thank you for all what you've done for me. To your friends? My friends. There's a couple that help me every day. They, they visit me and everything. I call that. I've got their names here. I'm going to. Yeah. Call that and Ralph. Let's see here. Oh, I don't have, do you, do you, would you have me those articles, please? Thank you.
Kathy and Zoel Collette. Right. Right. And these are the folks you want to thank. Were neighbors, yeah. They were neighbors. They were neighbors. And when my wife left and everything, and they were right by my side. They said, well, good. Don't worry about nothing. We'll They'll take care of you. Take care of it. And they still do. They still do. Good. Well, um, this has been a great interview. Uh, Maureen and I have really enjoyed talking with you and, and hearing your story. Um, and I guess I just want to say you say thank you, Andre Joseph Pru, yeah. for your participation yeah. in this program. I thank you again. Thank you very much. It yeah. was great. Thank you.